very much like what are we gonna do to win next game you know like you lose the first game you know it's crunch time you don't want to crack under any sort of pressure or anything but you also want to like make sure you take the next game very seriously you know yeah. you gotta you gotta win it to stay in it so they they were really focusing on their strategy and talking about what they needed to fix yeah. and in I the mean, last game so that's what you gotta they do ban out three of the big contenders from uh the rift turtles team composition last game mm -hmm. the shen the twitch the hecarim yeah. uh, shen hecarim don't, yeah. don't get that hecarim shen combo don't let them have that twitch that they seem yeah, to be twitch, prevalent twitch is on. a pretty strong pick in general and uh he seemed tormented to seem to do a pretty good job on it as well and on the other side, it looks like the Rift Turtles, they kind of go with the same sort of uh, strategy. They ban away Caitlyn, Zed, Sejuani, and the first pick for the Rift Turtles is going to be Gragas. So, could be top, yeah. could be jungle. Uh, Thunder Buddies, they actually switched out with an Echo pick, probably going towards Iceman in that mid lane. Yeah, yeah, I think we have seen him play Echo, Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, during the regular oh, season. Oh, and Deranged will pick up his Shivana. Yeah, that's definitely something he played a lot during the regular season. It's a good a good farming jungler, uh, probably farms even faster than the Graves he had last game, so we'll see if he can pop out of the jungle level 6 uh, with a farm lead. Um, Maybe change some team fights around for the Thunder Buddies. Rift Turtles will have to see their next two picks. Oh, the Zack was left open. Uh, and that right, is so going to gonna be... be... Those two picks, Greg and Zack together, makes for so much team fight potential. Yeah, there's a lot of engage on, on those two champions. A lot of tankiness and a, an unreasonable amount of damage for how tanky they are, honestly. <laughs> And then the Rift Turtles, they'll take the Zyra away from the Dark Dawn and put uh, Brimstone onto that support pick. Yeah. Zack did have his um, his E. They increased how much time this uh, there is before you see him land and where he's going to land. Uh, yeah, the, the <clears throat> shadow appears early. Yeah, yeah. which means even if you're jumping from Fog of War, people have a full second to move, flash, whatever, respond. So that did, I think, hurt his win rate a little bit. And also they took 50, 50 or 60 base damage off of his Q, which <clears throat> has multiple hits, which means that's, you know, if you're really maximizing all the damage you're going to do, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> that's potentially a 100 to 120 base damage nerf per target. So... Thunder Buddies, they take the Ezreal, and then they ban out Kogma and Ari. So take uh, uh, one of the mid lane picks away from the Rift Turtles and uh, deny uh, another hyper carry for Tormented. Yeah, they took away the Twitch, they took away the Kogma. Two big hyper carries. Uh, Jinx, though, uh, has been kind of creeping up and becoming a little bit more meta yep. because hyper carries have been doing decently well, especially with Ninja Tabi nerfs and Bork nerfs. And then there's two top lane bans from the Rift Turtles. So that looks like it might be an Echo Top. It, it is actually, Echo Top, yeah. actually. <laughs> uh, if I do remember, uh, Iceman has played a lot of Rise during the regular season. A lot, actually, yep. Sutan Ri is one of the people who still thinks that uh, they can make top lane Echo work. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think top lane Echo, if you, I mean, if you can go top lane Echo, if you go AP, I yeah. still think, I think it's tank like, Echo is kind of I think bad. it's viable as AP, but tank Echo top does struggle against I mean, just just struggles to be viable because there's a lot of champions that can kind of do it, but maybe better. <laughs> yeah, but the pick you want to talk about is that Yasuo for Can't Kill a Knot. He's just locked that in. Uh, that's a lot of combo with Zach Gragas. Yeah, uh, I mean Zyra, Kalista. Zach Gragas, Look at that. Zach Every Gragas, Zyra champion on the is side. huge AOE magic damage. Sorry, and uh, then they uh, yeah. Uh, the so every champion on the Rift Turtle side has a knockout. Mm-hmm. Even Callista in her own little way, having yeah. that ult where she throws her support at the enemy. And then the Dark Dead will take Sona for the support pick. So, yeah, like you were saying, there's a lot of wombo combo available for the Rift Turtles. In oh, I, I was just saying um, every single one of them just has, like, the AoE magic damage in the sense that, like, they've got so much just sort of magic damage coming out of, you know, a high damage support and two tanks that they can just go the Yasuo and... They're not going to miss out on too much. If the enemy team itemizes a lot of, like, itemizes Randuin's, Ninja Tabi, uh, you know, Sunfire, Deadmans, or whatever, because they're trying to avoid the Callista Yasuo's pretty high physical DPS, trying to avoid that, they're going to they're gonna sh 
you know, struggle pretty hard against the huge damage that's going to come out in these team fights from Zack Gragazyra. Mm -hmm. So they can't just itemize that armor either. Yeah, yeah. Important, especially important after a few of the changes recently to tank itemization that you have a good mix of damage in your team composition and the Rift Turtles. Yeah, they made it more important. Yeah. yeah. Thunder Buddies might actually be a little bit uh, tilted towards uh, magic damage. Mm -hmm. uh, just because Shivana does a lot of magic damage. Echo's gonna be doing- Echo and Rise are obviously magic damage carries. Sona. Uh, so- Yeah, Sona does a decent chunk of magic damage. Uh, Ezreal is gonna be the only source of physical damage. There's gonna be a lot of, uh, pressure on Kamina to perform in this game if mm -hmm. the Thunder Buddies wanna come out ahead. Yeah, over a course of- Ezreal's one of those champions who tends to have higher damage stats than the other 80 carries. Because he has, I mean, he can try to DPS like an AD, any other AD carry can in a fight. But he's also got poke and that, you know, the AOE damage ultimate that can hit multiple targets, really stacking up his damage quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important to. It's actually really important to hit uh, if you're when you're starting a team fight. True shot barrage across multiple team uh, mm -hmm. enemy team uh, is really helpful. Uh, not only for the damage, but also for stacking the Ezreal passive gets you a lot of a, oh, attack speed yeah. on the essence flux. Or not Essence Flux, uh, Rising Spell Force <laughs> is the uh, Israel passive. Alright, so just about through, or not quite just about or anything like that. We're getting through the spectator delay. Uh, and um, I don't know, I, I'm concerned for the Thunder Buddies team composition. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I just I think that the Rift Turtles have drafted so well uh, in this team comp. The only thing that they're well, I mean, they're not even really lacking anything in their team composition. They've got good engage. They've got good disengage. The Gragas will give you wave clear. You've mm -hmm. got um, physical damage. You got magic damage. You got CC. I think that the Rift Turtles team comp is really quite good. No, I I would agree with you. And I mean, on top of all those things that every team comp wants, they've got a huge amount of wombo potential. Um, yeah, the way that Zach's ultimate works is when he like picks people up and lands. It kind of put when it puts them back. There is a little bit of displacement that Yasuo can ult on. And also, there's a weird interaction where I think Yasuo can ult somebody who is mid air, mid Zach jump, and it pulls them out of Zach's jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can do that because like the it, it, the instant that Zach jumps into the air, you can actually also ult off. Yeah, it, yeah, and, and so and just like okay, <clears throat> uh, I was gonna pull him over here, but I guess you can have him. <laughs> you, and he can wait for Zach to land because there is a bit of displ displacement when they land yeah. too, and he can wait for that, or you know, like we said, he can just steal them out of Zach's ult and catch them in midair. And, yeah. it, and it actually stops them wherever Zach happens to be during when he ults. Yep. It's kind of funny. Alright, so looks like the spectator delay finally over. We're going to be able to get into game two between the Rift Turtles and Thunder Buddies. Mm -hmm. Once again, the Rift Turtles are up uh, one game over the Thunder Buddies as a result of game number one. There we go, we're getting into that. <laughs> <clears throat> this is a little bit unrelated, but that new Yasuo skin, the ultimate, oh, is quite satisfying. The Night Nightbringer Yasuo. Quite a satisfying ultimate. Jack is even going to share with you. I had Alec, a hash brown Alex had, Alec, I asked Alex what he wanted. He wanted a hash brown. This is our breakfast and lunch as, as we uh, cast through... The entire day for the most part. Although I think Shaden might make an appearance Shaden, later. Shaden will be here. To uh, <clears throat> sub in for some of the games here and there whenever Alex or I get tired or whatever. Or just want to go and uh, interact with the people hanging out here at DZ Comics. Okay, let's see. We'll be getting into it here pretty soon. Yeah, I think we're loading into the game faster than they are. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, Thunder Buddies are so nice to me. They just line themselves up. I have to move around the Rift Turtles. Yeah, I mean, it makes it, it makes them nice and pretty on the right side. People have asked, why don't we make it a requirement? It's because not everybody, not everyone has all the champions. Yeah. Someone told me that there was a, uh, they're like, oh, well, there's this one, there's this one group where if you want to pick a champion, but you don't own the champion, you tell the other team you want to pick that champion in that spot, and then you remake the lobby, and then you 
and the remake lobby isn't for like an actual pick ban phase. It's just to pick the champions to start the game. And I'm like, yeah, mm, no, <laughs> yeah. And then we're getting no. a little bit too complicated. We're not gonna do that. You're just not gonna be, you know, listed in order because that. It's not the end of the world. We list you in order at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. But it is pretty when yeah. a team is able to make it work or have enough champions. Hey, let's Neither see team going, going for any sort of invade. Both of them just sort of watching their jungle entrances, making sure there is no invade happening, trying to prevent deep vision going in on any of the buffs. I actually would have expected uh, Can't Kill a not to go for the Doran Shield start. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's Doran Shield is just overpowered. You can kind of just do it whenever you want. It's also a melee versus range matchup, even though Yasuo has a lot of ways to close the gap mm -hmm. and just get onto a mage like Rise. Ooh, Ooh dodges a lot away of damage. from a Kamina Q, but even dodging that Q loses half his health pretty quickly. I'm also interested to see why Kamina started the Sapphire Crystal. I just. He's really just trying to rush that. Oh, Brimstone takes a lot of damage coming back into the brush. Wow. Now, Brimstone is starting out with a huge disadvantage in this lane. Missing his first two Qs as well. I mean, he is, he is really quite squishy. Each of those notches in the health bar is 100 health. And, uh... <laughs> oh, but the, he turns out back Ooh. a lot of damage onto the Dark Dot as well. Sona and Zyra are both really squishy support champions. Double Doe fighting up with Sutan Ri. He's looking for that Z-Drive Resonance. Ooh. Not quite gonna get it. That was weird. I think the stream may have died for a second there. Sorry if that's the case. I don't think so. I think I think it's I think we're good. Anyway. Can't kill a not gonna get the knock up onto Iceman. Not too much damage right just yet. Brimstone coming forward, just wants to put down some damage. The Dark Dot taking a lot. Brimstone gets chunked a little bit. The Dark Dot obviously going to have the sustain advantage as Sona as well as having those extra potions because he didn't get chunked up at the beginning of the game. Dark the Brimstone takes another Mystic Shot from Kamina. Tormented is really healthy, however. Oh, legit and deranged find each other in the jungle. Legit doesn't have something to grab, grab onto. Elastic Sync Shot. He's gonna land deranged, knocked up into the air, but legit doesn't want to chase too far into the enemy jungle. Fermented. Putting down some damage onto the Dark Dud. Dark Dud able to shield a lot of it off with the area of Perseverance. Double though. Put some damage on the suits on Re. Good th Ooh, Thunderlord's proc from the Gragas. Brimstone gonna get the grasping roots onto the dark dive. Puts on a lot of damage. Brimstone taking a lot, however, Kamina moves forward to Dang, Brimstone taking a ton of harass damage in this lane. A mystic shot, I think, would kill him. He mm -hmm. needs to be careful not to get hit by that last one. If he uses his blink and then a flash and lands a Q that doesn't get flashed by Brimstone, man. that would be a quick kill for the Ezreal. Brimstone is, needs to be so careful here. The ward goes down in the brush. Kamina really wants to just snipe him out. So low, I don't blame him. He still has his flash, so if Kamina were to go two ham, that could be bad, but Brimstone is so low, he's just basically a non-factor right now. Tormented Callista is a really strong champion in lane. Uh, he's up against a zero combat stat from items Kamina. Yeah, that's why I was thinking if Kamina were to flash past um, Tormented and Brimstone threw down an Ignite flash to, you know, increase the distance and get away from the Ezreal, I think as Kamina might go down Probably die. to Tormented. Tormented yeah. will also he summon her heal to save his support. Yeah. So I, I think 
that's the only thing that was keeping Brimstone maybe in lane and Kamina from going to him. They were both wary of overcommitting to a fight and getting killed for it. I really, I really think um, as Ezreal, you can afford to uh, wait out a little bit longer on your tier and actually get the combat stats at level one. Just have a better laning phase. I really, I really just, uh, I'm not a fan of Sapphire Crystal Star on basically any champion, minus maybe Gangplank. <laughs> Although, uh, a lot of Gangplanks recently have gone for that Spell Thief's Edge start, I've seen. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. I've tried it, it's fun. It gives you a little bit of mana sustain, it gives you some extra poke damage if you want to just Q somebody. Uh, and then the, uh, the... The quest completion is pretty good on him. Yeah. The only downside is trying to get the procs off without CSing for 10 seconds. Well, but um, didn't they change it so that um, the getting CS doesn't actually uh, loot, disable you from procking it, it just disables the proc regeneration. Oh, I they might have changed that then. I might have because that's out on so that's that the change. main reason why I think it started coming up because mm -hmm. you are able to proc it while CSing. Oh, can't kill not getting ganked by the range here. The wind wall goes out. Not too much damage. Can't kill not not having to flash away or anything like that. Yeah, Iceman just didn't have enough mana to continue the chase there. Yeah, Thunder Buddies though they've got two two tiers stacking up for them. So, gonna hit a power spike probably around 15-20 minutes or so mm -hmm. if they're stacking it very effectively. That's about the the item breakthrough that you want to hit. Grasping Rage come out from Brimstone, coming and taking a little bit of damage. Healed up by Area Perseverance from the Dark Dud. Once again, Sutanri is pulling himself head in lane against Double Doe just ever so slightly. Double Doe is building, has built a Ruby Crystal and a Sapphire Crystal before he came back to lane. Iceman just picks up a catalyst. The only lanes that are poking each other right now are top lanes, so we just get to watch them. But here we go, finally, down to the bot lane. Dark Dud comes out. Puts down just the Him of Valor. Damage onto Tormented. Grimstone comes out. Oh, good grasping roots onto the Dark Dud. Takes the Thunderlord's prog Tormented, just auto harassing onto Kamina in the meantime. Windwall a little bit too far forward. Iceman nicely steps forward just to get in onto kill and can't kill a knot. Stone Grasping Roots, dodged away by the Essence, or, uh, ah, my goodness, Arcane Shift from Kamina. Legit, gonna find a Control Ward, nothing he can do here today. Iceman does still have his Flash available. Brimstone in the brush, Grasping Roots, not quite gonna find Kamina, good damage though, and Brimstone actually takes a lot in return. Dark Dad drops a ward into that brush. Sutan re jumping in onto Double Doe. Gets stunned up by the body slam. Here's the parallel convergence. Double Doe nicely sidesteps out of it. He's gonna turn around. Doesn't want to trade into that shield, however. Got the Q fermenting. I like that ability. The whole fermenting thing throws it out. Increases the damage. Seaton Reed jumping in onto Double Doe again. He is going Tank Echo, which, I mean, I really. I just. I think Tank Echo is bad. <laughs> yeah, they did a lot uh, multiple times to increase his uh, ratios, reduce his base damages, uh, make the shield pretty AP based. Looks like the Ooh, Rift, Rift Herald's Turtles going for, for a very early Rift Herald. Uh, they've actually rotated Brimstone up here to help as well. The plants can tank up a, a, one or two of those Rift, Rift Herald autos. Double Doe finds a control ward. Sutunri. It doesn't look like they're reacting to it at all. Looks like they might try to get a dragon in response, but the Rift Herald's going to be more impactful during this early game. Yeah, I mean, 
So, I mean, obviously, Deranged would like to have those dragons, and it looks like that's what he's going to be doing. Mm -hmm. Rift Channel, yeah, it's going to be more impactful in the early game, but as the game goes on, those dragons last longer. Yeah, than no, the and course. As well as Shivana being good scaling with it. Thunder Buddies do respond to the Rift Channel with the Cloud Drake. What is what is it she gets from it? Is it like 10 armor and magic resist to each one of them? Uh, I think it's only 5, actually. 5? Okay. 5 armor and magic resist. And they actually drop the Rift Herald immediately into that mid lane. Brimstone's here as well. They're trying to get Tower First Blood very early on. Rift Herald's with a very early, and Deranged gets knocked aside by the Rift Herald. He drags the scent onto the Rift Herald, trying to clear it out. Teleport comes in from the Army. Legit jumps in with the Elastic Sync Shot. Doesn't find anyone. Parallel Convergence. Not going to stun up anyone because she's something wasn't in it. The Rift Herald goes down. Good knock up. Oh, on a two! Can't kill a knot! First blood goes over to Brimstone. Alas, or uh, Let's Bounce doesn't find anyone. Can't kill a knot. Has to flash out from under tower range. There's the parallel, uh, Chrono Break. Good Ooh. explosive cast. Knocks them into the tower. Elastic Slingshot comes in. He misses. He overshoots. Iceman stunned up by the body slam. Rift Turtles are gonna get tower first blood. Yeah, it looked like they weren't. It looked like they were gonna be able to hold them off, but then Deranged gets hit by the uh, Steel Tempest from Yasuo. Gets ulted. Zack follows up and they pick up the kill. Pretty quickly, then with that member down, it's an easy task finishing off that turret. So, first blood, tower first blood, goes over to the Rift Turtles. They're a, just under, just over 1k gold lead for the Rift Turtles now. They've actually got a huge CS lead for Tormented already. Ooh. Oh, flash crescendo from the Dark Down, true shot barrage! Brimstone goes down. Tormented now exhausted. He's going to have to back himself away here. I don't think he'll be going down. Or the teleport comes out. The Dark Down gets the summoner heal. The rend is not available. Double Doe disengages the fight. Or will he? He's looking for the body slam, but the minion wave going to be blocking that one away. That was one of those dangers of sitting somewhere that people have vision of you. <laughs> that you think you're hidden, you're really not. And then that happens. <laughs> yeah, really well coordinated from the bottom in your Thunder Buddies for life. Double Doe, he's gonna be down here in the bottom lane with Tormented. They're gonna lose their tower in the top lane to Deranged and to Tonri. All right, <clears throat> evening up the tower count, but that first tower was tower first but I mean, blood. Look, it's a negligible gold lead. No, yeah, they're, they're even in gold. They're even in gold. Yeah. Pretty big CS advantage in the top lane for Sutan Ri. Uh, decent CS mirrored advantage. For, mirrored yeah. in the bottom Mi and mid lanes for the Rift Turtles only. Mm -hmm. They are going to have that Rod of Ages stacking on Iceman now. Tier of the Goddess has been stacking for both Kamina and Iceman. And uh -huh. the range is jungling pretty effectively this game, actually. Or efficiently, rather. Yeah, he's probably a decent part of why his team is still in the running gold-wise. Yeah. Rift Turtles bottom lane. They are going to get some free time with this tower. Amina and Dark Dud did recall. We'll see what the Rift Turtles can do. Tree Shot Barrage comes out to thin out the minion wave. They're looking for the tower, but it's actually very healthy. Dormans, it takes about half of his HP off of, from Dark Dud alone. Yeah, Double Dude not taking too much damage from Ooh. Sutan Ri right now. Like we mentioned, Sutan Ri is not going damage, and Double Doe's not even building magic resist, yeah, but he's I not really taking he much should damage. Be going for the Rod of Ages. Oh, I, I, yeah, I, going, if you need some mana, you know, going something along the lines of, Ice actually, didn't, didn't, or didn't they, or oh, next, next patch is when they're changing Abyssal. Okay. What do you uh, mean? Abyssal's gonna become a catalyst item. Oh. But anyway, norm you don't normally go Rod of Aegis on Gragas anymore. Uh, at least in the top lane, generally just go for the full tank build. Legit, less extinct shot doesn't land. He's gonna get the Q, not gonna pull him in. The good crescendo onto Can't Kill a Knot. Let's bounce onto nothing. He actually doesn't even proc it to jump into the air. It looks like he maybe was gonna use it to just jump towards them, land on them for the extra damage, oh, but Durant? he decides not to. He gets a little bit oh, too low. Oh, there's this uh, Fates Call. He's gonna knock up Derange. Who gets knocked back a lot? Elastic Sinkshot onto Derange. The Flash and the Last Breath comes out. Deranged will go down. The Red Turtles come out one for zero. What knocked him back? I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure to be honest with you. He got he jumped back. Uh, Brims, I mean, you but, do get knocked back a little bit to your auto attack range after the Fates call, 
Okay, that explains why he must. It, it just made it, it just looked it farther looked than usual. It looked a lot farther yeah. than usual. You're right. I don't know what that was. Huh. Suton re rotating into the bottom lane to try and help hold. They really don't want to let them have get tower advantage. Your shot barrage comes across. Brimstone actually almost died from that one. Thank God it's not DFT Ezreal. <laughs> DFT Ezreal's not good. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> A he's slight jab at one of your teammates from season two. He's, he's not the only one who's done it. I've, I've seen a lot of people accidentally do that somehow. They just take their gen runes or some or gen masteries or something, and then don't change. That's thing. why uh, you make your masteries between games every time. <laughs> yep. I mean, when, once runes reforged comes out, it definitely shouldn't be a problem ever again. Yeah, I, I they're gonna set it up pretty much to where before every game you're just gonna you just kind of do it do your thing. Yeah. I like the whole runes reforged thing. Honestly, it never really made sense to have two different predetermined things anyway. I'd, yeah, at least I you're thought. right. I, I mean, like just having them be in the same. Oh, last breath comes Ooh. in onto Sutan Ri. He's gonna get caught by Parallel Convergence. Chrono breaks it into it. Can't kill enough. Flashes away. Good knock up to disengage the range. Used his dragons to send down there. A good stun and ult out of Sutan Ri, but I mean, Sutan like we Ri said, is spending a lot of time in this uh, bottom lane. It's actually closing the lead for double, though. He's actually got himself a CS mm -hmm. lead now. This Durange. might be another dragon for Durange, though. So Zach is here and has vision, and he's not gonna have vision Durange for much longer. Gonna he's gonna jump in, though. Here comes a stun in. from Sutan Ri, potentially. Knock up. The Sutan Ri doesn't have dragon's descent. Here comes Can't Kill a Knot, exhausted in, stolen by Legit with a smite. Can't Kill a Knot doesn't have last breath. He's gonna get caught and go down. Now Legit is in trouble. He's gonna lose his passive here. Oh, good fate's call comes in, but the good crescendo to counter. Brim so it's gonna go down. Good knockout from the Strangle Thorns. Torment to trying to kite back, but now he's getting focused down by all the members of Thunder Buddies. He's gonna pass away. Rend takes out Durange. He's jumping away. Sutan Ri flashes for it and gets him. It's wow. a four okay, so for one in favor of Thunder Buddies, but the dragon over to Rift Turtles. Yeah, I. Not worth it. After Zach got that uh, oh, explosive. Oh! <laughs> nice plays from Double Doe onto Kamina. Um, honestly, after Zach stole that, everybody should have left Zach to die. Yeah. I know it sounds bad, but like they weren't in a position to team fight over that objective. Zach jumping in and trying to steal it is worth it. You know, it's if him being able to not only deny that Infernal, which is a huge dragon, but deny Shivana from getting yet another stack to add her to her resistances. That's worth it for him to jump in there and maybe die for it, but, but the rest of his more team. People die. Yeah. Luckily, Double Doe got a nice kill and was able to clear out a minion wave, uh, preventing Another Thunder Buddies from taking a down. tower from that extra tower going down, but not worth overall for the Rift Turtles. The Abyssal Mask is the first item for Suit on the lead. That's uh just what trying to increase his team's magic damage in his own. Yeah, I would I would think so. There's a lot of magic damage coming out from the team. There's also a magic resist item since he's going for the tank echo anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh yes. Someone knocked on the door. <laughs> Taking a lot of damage to range, having to back away. Rift Turtles get a three man push onto the top lane tower of Thunder Buddies for life. Deranged having to back away. There's no way he can hold Torment to taking the tower aggro. Deranged trying to focus him down. Ignite goes down from can't kill a knot, however. Legit still taking tower. Elastic Seeker comes in. He dies to the tower. The Rift Turtles trying to get it down. Crescendo misses from the Dark Dud. They're trying to get the tower. It's so low. Teleport coming in from Iceman. Iceman is gonna use the Realm Warp to get into the back. Double Doe comes in. Kamina taking a lot of damage. Iceman now getting jumped on by two members, but he's very tanky. He's actually putting down a lot of damage. He runs around. Can't kill a knot. Jumps in onto the Dark Dud. Exhaust goes down on Can't Kill a Knot as he runs away, but he will go down the Dark Dud on a killing spree on Sona. Very nice. All 
sorry, deranged. Get him back over. Come in, Brimstone is here. Double Doe looking for the kill on the Kamina. He doesn't have the explosive cast, but he gets the Thunderlord's proc off. Oh, Body Slam catches the minion. He's not even gonna get the Q damage off on the Kamina. And Sutan Ri rotating into the bottom lane. They're focusing, getting ready to focus him down. He jumps in onto Double Doe, slows him up, doesn't get the parallel conversion stun. Double Doe jumping in, Kamina backing away. They're really trying to keep this tower from going down. It's two towers to one in favor of Thunder Buddies. They did manage to get that one in the mid lane. Brimstone taking a lot of damage. Explosive cast misses. Sutan Ri actually doesn't want to go in by himself, however. But that disengage tool not available for the Red Turtles. Yeah, so we are going to have a pause. We are going to go try and resolve that issue, and we'll see what's going on.
All right, quick update. It looks like there's probably an ISP issue going on. So yeah, places near here are having issues with cash registers and Wi-Fi. Uh, we've had we had a tournament here where there were twice as many computers running all seamlessly, no lag spikes whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But we're getting moments where both the stream are laggy and the players' computers are lagging for you know a couple seconds at a time even. Um, so we think there's some sort of ISP issue. If it continues to be an issue, we might, uh, you know, maybe split up today or, you know, move today or just do today on, or do to this, these playoffs online or something. We'll sort it out. There's other ways we can do it. Hopefully it, you know, resolves itself or yeah, the ISP but, resolves uh, it. For the, for the time, we are going to try and get these games back underway. Yes. Um, the pause should be expiring here pretty soon. Yeah, just a minute or two. Um, but as, as of right now, um, uh, Thunder Buddies are actually decent bit ahead in terms of gold. They've got that tower lead, um, their rise is continuing to scale up, and rise, as we all know, scales really quite effectively. Oh, Ezreal, for sure. uh, 3, 1, and 2 is caught up with the, uh, Tormented on this Callista. It, I mean, if Ezreal can... Uh, get a lead at least in the early to mid game. He can be quite effective in yeah. game actually. Yeah, yeah. No, Ezreal's a really quite a good AD carry uh, towards the mid to late game. Mm -hmm. uh, does get outscaled obviously by any of those hyper carries. Yeah, by the hyper carries. About, but Callista is also a champion that falls off really hard towards mm -hmm. the late game. Oh. Let's see, Sutan rebuilding towards that Sunfire cave. It looks like after the Abyssal Mask. It's actually really good uh, synergy among the between those two tank items because of the sun fire damage being amplified by the abyssal mass. Yeah, that's man, unrelated. I've really been having fun going the sunfire abyssal mask on Shin, and with the uh, changes that they're planning to abyssal to make it a catalyst item, I probably won't <laughs> probably won't get to. Uh, it's like, well, okay, build I that. guess I don't get to play yeah. Shen anymore. And, and it's because you know you can you can go something like a. A Triforce or something on like a champion like Shen, maybe um, even though you're missing out on that mana. But when you have a whole catalyst passive, which relies on sustaining you by spending mana and restoring mana by costing health, while also having a sizable amount of flat mana put on the item, it's going to be something you're that you can't. A lot of gold it's yeah, it's something you're not really going to be able to build on a champion like Shen or Zac anymore mm -hmm. after that change because you're going to be. This just you're losing too much for it to be worth it. So I'm a little sad about ah, that. Okay. All right. Pause is finally out. Wait, this might have been the short pause to make sure they even carry can move. That is true. It could be the short pause. No, it looks to be the real pause. Okay. okay. All right. So we're going back into it. If we encounter more issues, like we said, we might reschedule or relocate or something for the Gold Division playoffs because, as we mentioned, internet service provider issues. All right. Legit walks over award. He gets spotted, so does Zyra, so they know that the bot lane is not here. The Ritual's expended their teleport into the top lane, Double Doe went there to answer the push. Trin or, uh, Trinity Force not finished for Kamina, they got the locket for the Dark Dut as well. Brimstone, oh, Deranged pops up with a Blast Cone, they find legit pop down a double control ward in the dragon area third dragon of the game will be another cloud it's spawning in about 30 seconds so he's looking for the parallel convergence over the side he doesn't get the stun but he jumps onto legit puts down a little bit of damage but he doesn't do too much he is a tank echo oh he, the blast gun actually interrupted and actually can't kill him not is caught in the middle of thunder buddies legit leaves him out to dry double though into the top lane all right dragon is spawning in just 10 seconds deranged really wants these dragons. He's Shivana. He scales harder than any other jungler because he's the only one who gets some sort of benefit when his team takes these. So they're really pushing for these. He's going to try to get deranged. Pretty tanky for the late game. Hopefully it's somebody who can dive tormented and take him out quickly. Yeah. Everybody's been trying to pull the dragon out. And it's getting held in by Zyra plants. The double though does get a tower in the top lane in response to this. Thunder Buddies do secure it. The strangle thorns were used to try and steal it, but not gonna find it today.
also, it is double Cloud Drake for Thunder Buddies, and Cloud Drake is a ooh, torment that takes a lot of damage, but Cloud Drake is a, the dragon that does really quite well uh, when it's stacked. It's very good at two Drakes and really good at three Cloud Drakes. Not quite, not quite what you want with only one of them, but um, it actually does amplify your ability to rotate around the map quite a bit. I mean, uh, getting some free damage onto this tower. He gets a Mystic Star on a Tormented. There's a lot of members of the Rift Turtles, however, converging onto this bottom lane. They've already gotten the mid and top outer turrets, and the Rift Turtles, they want to open up the map. They want to get that third or, uh, tower in the bottom lane, and they've already rotated all th five of their members into the bottom lane. Dark Dud trying to hold it away, but he's not going to be able to. He really needs to back away. Crescendo goes out. He only catches one with it. The Rift Turtles now turn onto him as the tower goes down. They catch him with the last breath. Thunder Dark Dud will be shut down. And here's Sue Thundering into the backline torment to take a lot of damage, but he's able to kite away. Ooh, gets caught by Iceman in the end, and Explosive Cast not enough to save him. Brimstone will be going down to the range after the Dragon's Descent and the Flash. Sue Thundering jumping onto Double Doe now. Double Doe, however, I think he can eight, turn this one around. Double Doe, he, he gets jumped on by the Junior of Resonance, fermenting the Q. He's running away. Iceman's here, roots him in place, and he will go down. Iceman on killing spree. It's a 3 for 1 in favor of Thunder Buddies for Life, but they lose the tower in the meanwhile. And actually, Double Doe is going for has gone for the Proto Belt after the Rod of Ages, so a very heavy damage-oriented Gragas build. Yeah, I guess he was looking at his team comp like, we could use some more damage, <laughs> decides I mean, to go. I think it's, a. Uh, it, if you're gonna go with the Proto Belt and the Rod of Ages, that's a little bit better than yeah. going Rod of Ages. Oh yeah, if, if going Rod of Ages into tank, not the most optimal, but if he is, you know, going for kind of a more bruisery health and AP build, not so bad. Yeah. Honestly, kind of works out. Gragas is a champion that does okay going heavier on the damage side. Yeah. He's got pretty good ratios. For a fat man. If you've ever seen sci-fi's montages that he likes to post. and uh, Well, I'm just... Yeah. I mean, it's just an example of how AP Gragas can actually do quite a bit of damage. Yeah. A Titanic Hydra for deranged... Gonna be, that's a lot of damage coming out of the Shivana. Alright, some bush baits going on near the Baron. Not standing in bushes that are warded. Smart. Mm -hmm. Alright, Tank Kill Not is struggling a little bit on this Yasuo. 0 oh, 3 and 4 at this point. Still yet to pick up a kill. Legit gonna elastic and shot his way onto the Booba. Yeah, Yasuo is a champion that doesn't really get to see too much competitive play, but honestly, even high elo players do think he's strong. Like, strong but people, risky, well, I some think. Some people don't, like, most people don't really even think he's, like, strong. Mm -hmm. Like, the reason he has well, a it's high just, ban I... rate is because he's, a, no one likes playing against it. <laughs> and you also don't want to have the one on your team that's going to feed. It's one, uh, of the, it's one of those champions. The enemy team has the god Yasuo, your team has the yeah. feeder Yasuo. Uh, um, Yasuo is, a, is a, in lane, Yasuo is very susceptible to ganks because... Against most mages, he kind of auto shoves the wave mm -hmm. uh, because he's dashing through things, trying to get good trades off, putting a lot of damage onto the minion wave, um, and uh, he's actually very, really quite easy to gank, especially when he uses the wind wall in the trade. Parallel convergence not going to stun up any of the rift turtles. They bulk. Looks like both teams converging onto this mid lane. The rift turtles will be the first to back away. Yeah, I'm not sure if we can do too much about the white noise when the mic is active. That's gonna be some of the ambient noise of the building <laughs> coming in a little bit louder than when I get Rift to Turtles stream. Rift Turtles are home. starting up the Baron. They've already seen a uh, legit Elastic Slingshot into the pit with that ward and that brush behind the red buff. Deranged looking for it. He's got a ward into the pit. Sutonri gonna come in with a parallel conversion. Stuns him up. Deranged There's a good crescendo! Stranglethorn snuffs up to Thunder Buddies for Life Jungler. Deranged into the pit. The smite is there, and it's gonna go down to Deranged! The Thunder Buddies steal away the Baron! It's the first kill of the fight. It is on to a lot of members of the Oklahoma Rift Turtles. The Thunder Buddies steal the Baron. Ace the, R the Rift Turtles. I mean, that was a pretty well executed, like, just fight around the Baron uh, for Thunder Buddies. 
Dark Dud got off a really good crescendo. Sutan Ri even stunned up several members. His ultimate landed on at least two people. I think it was three. Um, and Deranged came over the wall. Uh, didn't focus the Baron. He just went straight for the enemy team's jungler. The smite went down. It looked like both smites went down early. Yeah. And uh, Deranged just kind of picked it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one of the things, like, even if you... Uh, even if you uh, have positional advantage on the Baron, you really have to control vision around the area because they had no idea what was coming around over the side of the Baron Yeah, pit. and Sutenri and Deranged were both sitting there with their mobility spells at the ready mm -hmm. to engage on that. Can't Kill or Not did his best there to try and kill the enemy quick enough, but uh, Sutenri's ult, just even the base damage low was enough to chunk him pretty hard and he was already about half health. Dark Dead, Kamina, and Iceman coming off the side after Sutan Ri and Deranged went over the wall. Yeah, and then Deranged is going to get another dragon stacking up onto the Shivana. Yeah, we might very well be going into a game three. The Thunder, uh, the Rift Trolls lose two inhib towers, but lose neither of their inhibs. However, mm -hmm. base hasn't quite been, isn't quite under pressure yet. But it's a big swing in favor of the Thunder Buddies for life. They're now up. 9.5k gold. Yeah, it seemed like, honestly, the very early game seemed like it might have been favoring the Rift Turtles, but once they lost that uh, pretty decent fight after legit stole the Infernal Dragon, uh, ever since then, Thunder Buddies have been winning a lot of fights. Yeah. It's a pretty big gold swing in favor of them. Now they're sitting at a almost a 10k gold lead, which that's... It's just it's the snowball, you know? We talked about it a little bit last game, and just uh, oh, double trying to... Take a lot of damage. Wow. Kamina's... A oh, explosive cast into the tower! Afterwards, Kamina is going to get shut down! That was not the arcane shift you wanted. Iceman gonna Zanya is going to get the realm warp out! Wow. So Iceman will survive, but Kamina, after arcane shifting forward... Definitely not the play you wanted to make yeah. on this as He started hitting the uh, he started <laughs> He started hitting Gragas and was like wow I do a lot of damage to this guy because Gragas has only built uh, bruiser damage items and magic resist and But unfortunately for him Gragas has been <laughs> building bruiser damage oh, items. Oh look at that Tormented Ooh. gets jumped on by Durant. He's kiting backwards. Durant flashes forward. He actually cues the minions and now Tormented kiting back He's taking a lot of damage. The redemption from the Thunder Buddies comes in and Deranged able to run himself out of there. That Rand is stacking up very nicely, but it will not ever pull, pull out. Well, both of their flashes go down, although... Ooh, oh, legit might be trying to get up. Oh, gets, gets ward. the uh, stretching strikes in, but Suton Ri, he's built tank echo, so he's not quite going to be taking too much damage there. No. Legis also a little bit behind in terms of experience. He's level 14 to Deranged's level 17. Oh, Deranged has been taking a lot of jungle camps. He even has two kills for a little bit more of that experience, and it's it's showing. It has quite the experience lead over Zack. I mean, Zack is a champion with a pretty decent clear, so... Yeah, Zack is considered the only tank jungler that can actually, like, keep tempo with a lot of the fast clearing junglers, mm -hmm. like, uh... Lee Sin, or to, to a lesser extent, Shivana, but uh, Deranged has been doing a really good job. Yeah. I mean, that's it's kind of what you see, like, win rate wise uh, for the solo queue junglers. You see Zach, Nunu, and Ivern topping the win rate charts. <laughs> um, Nunu, Nunu or, uh, and uh, Nunu. Uh, Ivern is a special case, because Ivern doesn't clear particularly fast, uh, except for with Smite. Mm -hmm. It's just that he offers so much of utility to the team. And cheesing that denies other junglers oh yeah you know he's he, he can do, if if somebody's pretty experienced with ivern they can uh oh not getting that cs um they can clear pretty efficiently i guess and counter jungle pretty quickly if the they range, manage their passive right the range is itemized full armor really just that. aiming for those two carries yeah just trying to kill can't kill or not and tormented not, not really at all concerned with Brimstone, which it or double the O with Dark Dud. Might be caught here. Stretching strike. He's gonna come on, land on Iceman, pulls into range as well. But legit is taking a lot of damage. He's not quite as tanky as he'd like to be right now. Oh, 
Thunder, but he's moving into the bottom lane. Brimstone is here by himself. The Rift Turtle's a little bit too slow on the rotation, but it looks like they will be able to make it here in time to catch the minion wave. The Baron is no longer active for the Thunder Buddies. Double Doe looking for the big play. Here you go, little freeze there. <laughs> of course, Yasuo was nerfed fairly recently as well. It's pretty small. Uh, the Q nerf is actually pretty sizable in lane. Was it from ten? Yeah, to in lane. Ten, yeah, ten yeah. seconds to six. Mm -hmm. This actually hurts his ability to engage for himself as well. Mm -hmm. So knock up on the Iceman. Rip Turtles. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Yasuo, they 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 gave him the ner oh. Legit Range. might find an engage here. Mm, Not no. quite yet. Redemption's gonna come down from oh Dark Dot flashes for the crescendo and can't kill him. Not is dead immediately. Elastic Sage shot comes in. It doesn't matter. Strangle Thorns knocks them all up into the air and. Tormented trying to rip through them, but it's a double kill over to Kamina. He's threading through them. It's a triple kill. Legit. Now has to flash away Elastic Sage on his way out to safety. And Thunder Buddies come out four for zero. Man, they had just a really they they the Thunder Buddies have been very coordinated in their efforts. They're they just say like, all right, let's turn in three, two, one, and then flashes ults come out simultaneously, yeah, I mean, deleting the, targets. When the redemption came, when the Thunder Buddy's redemption came down, you had to know that that was coming. Yeah, because they you were, see the they redemption, were preparing. and then the Dark Dawn instantly flash crescendos. They all jump in at the same time. Rift Turtles unable to disengage effectively. Right, legit gonna get jumped on by Sutan Ri as the last sing shot out. There's the first inhib going down. They're moving to the second one as Durain shoves in the minion wave in the bottom lane. And that's gonna be probably three inhibitors for Thunder Buddies. They're also up to three oh dragons. God, they have a really significant gold lead. The inhib falls. Legit, legit gets in. it. Oh, shot onto Kamina. Kamina okay. might go down here. No, he Flashes barely gets away. out. Can't kill Still in. goes down. Explosive cast goes down. Sutan Ri coming in. Brimstone will go down. No, not quite. It's a triple kill over to the Rift Turtles. Durain is gonna get the third inhib in the bottom lane. In, in the meantime, if Deranged and uh, Sona can keep this Baron safe during the uh, duration of these respawn timers, then this is going to be huge for Thunder Buddies. I don't think Rift Turtles are going to stray too far from their base with three inhibitors down. Elder Dragon's up. I think Shivana might be looking to solo it. She's kind of down there clearing it out. Kalista's going up towards the Baron. It looks like they're going to want to go for it. If I were the Shivana, I would go down to split push. <laughs> I would force them away from this Baron. Brimstone is super low, though. Looks like Legit's engaging on it. Brimstone's going to heal up a little bit off the honey fruit here. Shivana's soloing the uh, Elder. Looks like she's just like, all right, you guys can take the Baron. We're going to get Elder. They've got three dragons and a yeah. Shivana. She she seems okay with it. Yeah, it's not as though the Rift Turtles are going to be able to do anything with this Baron with so much pressure on their base. Drew Shot Barrage comes across. I mean, it is it is 300 gold uh, per champion. It's a, It helps, you know, ease that pretty l significant gold difference. Yeah. They're still gonna be eight and a half, uh, eight and a half k gold down behind the Thunder Buddies. It's nine towers to three. The Rift Turtles made a lot of good uh, rotations in the early game, trying to get those towers down. But the Thunder Buddies were able to answer back and win out in those team fights over those neutral objectives and uh, push their lead that way. Now they've got a three dragon elder on all their members. Three inhibs down, and they're ready to end this game. Now the Baron minions are only slowing them down a little. They're planning on getting their minions in here, and they're gonna try to take a team fight with this Elder. Uh -oh. and they're gonna double dose caught out of position. The body slam used into the minion wave. Double dose caught. The explosive cast not gonna be able to save his life. It looked like a hefty deal of creep block. It looked like he was trying to walk, but his model was sort of stuck. Ooh, Brimstone takes a huge amount of damage from just one Q from Kamina. That true damage burn is so significant. Yeah, but it's not going to matter, though. Here's the Super Minion streaming in. The le first tower is so close to going down. Flash away from Torment and scared of that Crescendo coming in. Oh, there's the Dragon's Ascent! He pulls in his support. He knocks up somebody. There's the Crescendo going down. Brimstone is going to go down. Iceman roots him in place. Elastic Sneeshot comes down. There's a last breath, and they let's bounce him right in place, but can't kill him. Not just going to die to ambient damage. Tormented is the next to fall. They pull him in. Legit will lose his passive, but the Thunder Buddies will end the game.
evening up the score and pushing us to game three. Yeah, 1-1, one, one, both uh, victories looking pretty decisive out of each of these teams. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in game three. I think the Yasuo pick didn't really pan out uh, super well. It seemed like the more they... I mean, Yasuo's just a champion. The more you get behind, the harder it is to accomplish something. Uh, and he, when he goes in, he puts himself at such a risk, and they were deleting him as quickly as they could every time he used that uh, last breath. Yep. So, um, really nice play by the Thunder Buddies in Game 2. They even up the score, and we'll see these two teams play off in Game 3 to see who goes to Finals. But uh, before that, we'll take a short break. Uh, looks like I, I'm hoping the internet issues are going to be resolved. Yeah. Um, seems so. like we didn't run into too many near the end of that game, so that's good. Hopefully we don't run into any more today. So, uh, we will see you in just a few minutes. Thanks guys so much for watching. Silent in the dark Waiting for the spark The wood soaked in the blood Their hands join in the mud The ember gently glowed The spark took
Internet, hello and welcome back to uh, OKLCS Season 3 Gold Cap Playoffs. We're in our final game of, not the day, but of yeah. this series uh, between Thunder Buddies for Life yep. and the Rock Solid Rift Turtles. They are one and one tied up at um, this final game. Yep. So we'll see which of these two teams will make it to finals. Uh, game one, we saw the uh, Rift Turtles win pretty handily really uh, they just started building some small leads in the early game and they really capitalized on those and just started taking objective after objective not making any big mistakes to set them back and they won the game and the next game was pretty much the same no thing problem. except in favor of the thunder buddies yeah so these small leads in the beginning of these games are you know becoming huge ones uh, neither of these teams is very willing to like make a huge mistake um, and they're so they're just playing Honestly, just pretty well, pretty efficiently, pretty so I go. And it looks working like off their leads. The Thunder Buddies, ba uh, both of these teams are kind of just banning away what won against them in their respective games. They Thunder Buddies ban away the Hecarim, the Twitch, uh, the Lulu, I guess just to avoid empowering uh, the Rift Turtles AD carry. Mm -hmm. The Rift Turtles in ban away the Shivana, deranged, really farmed up a storm on the champion. Mm -hmm. um, the Ezreal that Kamina kind of popped off on a yeah. little bit. Um, and the Shin from the first game. Actually, the Shin was played by the Rift oh, Turtles. Oh, you're right, you're right. It was played by the Rift Turtles. Oh, they but the have... Caitlyn makes it through for the first time this series after the Echo is first picked up by the Thunder Buddies. Um, yeah, probably tank Echo for Sutan Ri again. Um, Caitlyn gonna... It is locked yep. in. Okay, so Caitlyn gets locked in for the Rift Turtles. Let's see who they're going to pick next. Karma. So Caitlyn Karma bot lane. That's a pretty solid bot lane. Yeah, it's a real, has a lot of lane priority. Both of those champions scale really well towards the late game. Yeah. Um, I, I, is, is Caitlyn's thing that she kind of falls off in the right when they le she leaves lane? Yeah, she right? kind of falls off at mid, mid game if she hasn't like really abused her lane advantage. Uh, because she has no uh, steroids in her kit. Mm -hmm. she she's has, item dependent. Yeah, she's item dependent. Yeah. Yeah. So her, kits, her, her kit facilitates you know, a good laning phase. Uh, her kit and her long attack range also facilitate that good late game, but she needs the items to do it, and during the mid game is when she's oh. still trying to build towards those, yeah, leading towards the rough uh, mid game. It's a hey. Ramus. Ramus. Uh, Thunder Buddies pick up the Ramus in the jungle, and they pick up their rise once again. So the same solo lanes pick up the Ramus instead of the Shivana. Deranged pulling out the newly uh, mini reworked mini Ramus. Reworked, yeah. I, I'm a huge fan of the Ramus mini rework. He hasn't seen too much popularity since then. I think the only mini rework that has significantly increased the champion's popularity so far has been Heimerdinger's. Um, but I don't know uh, why Kindred's actually got Kindred's has been getting of, more popular. Pop okay. Like she's considered really weak, but, but people she's like been her. having okay. a lot of more good. play. Well, I think I think Ramus seems pretty cool. He's kind of got this like binary. I'm either really slow or really fast thing going on. He doesn't really move much and anywhere in between. He basically has a permanent attack speed buff when he ults. His ultimate slows people. His uh, defensive Talk. thing slows himself while making him incredibly tanky while he's slowed, and his powerball's on a shorter cooldown now with uh, more movement speed than before, and slightly less duration. I can't um, kill a knot, we'll pick up the Orianna yeah, yeah. in the mid lane, but no, okay. you may please go Sorry. ahead about your so, Rambus. So, so I just, and Rambus' ganks now are pretty darn good. He's probably gonna max that taunt really because really it, potent. and the yeah. taunt, maxing the taunt doesn't hurt his clear because it is giving him attack speed attack instead speed. of armor reduction like it used to. So he can max that, get a really high 
uh, CC, 2.25 seconds of CC for, you know, I guess it'd probably be about two seconds by the time he had like a level six gank or something. His ultimate slows helping out his ganks, his taunt, he can max first and still clear well. His, and it, I just love his little, it's just kind of back and forth. Like I'm really, when he's really slow, he's really tanky and he can get really fast to like catch up to people. It's cool, it's cool. Okay, yeah. there's a Galio. Um, they ban away the Sona and the Nautilus in the second round of bans for the Rift Turtles. On the other side, Thunder Buddies take away Gragas and Galio. We don't want to let um, Brimstone, or not Brimstone, uh, Double Dope play any of those uh, big beefy tanks, um, even though he might have built a AP on Gragas. Yeah. Um, on the other side, the Sona was really quite good from the Dark Dead. He whiffed a few crescendos, but hit some really good ones, mm -hmm. uh, and those engages were really powerful. The Rift Turtles pick up the Jarvan in the jungle for legit. So Jarvan Oriana, really, no, a lot of really, engage yeah, combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really good. Jarvan's late game is pretty good. Yeah, uh, ever his, since his Jarvan's little changes really to his shield good. too. Um, uh, a lot of people consider Jarvan to be one of the better junglers on this patch. Ever since Leeson and Graves are kind of falling down, mm -hmm. Jarvan kind of rises to the occasion. Yeah. Uh, Kamina will pick up the Lucian on the side of the Thunder Buddies, and what will the support pick be? Still got yeah, we'll have to see what the sport pick is because, like we mentioned, Sona is banned now. That's what Dark Dead has played the last yeah. two so games. Who? Going for a Soraka. I would... That's that's Gonna interesting. Be... He does lock it in. Okay. Well, um, Soraka is I interesting. It's, <laughs> you kind of Soraka kind of works really well against the right team comp. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Rift Turtles is the team comp to have picked the Soraka into mm -hmm. because you're just gonna get I, jumped on by Jar Jarvan. Jarvan Oriana might just wreck her. And then the Cho'Gath in the top lane for Double Doe. This is something he's. I think he's played it in the regular season. I believe he has. I believe uh, he has. Double Doe, of course, that uh, prolific Garen in the regular <laughs> season. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Um, Trogoth is a, is a kind of a, he's a unique champion right now. He's like a, I don't know, just a really beefy battle mage. He's, uh, I mean, I don't really know what else to call him. He has, uh, I think what he, he, he what he kind of tries to do is try to be uh, a wall. You kind of just stand there. A and, literal wall. Yeah. Literally be a wall. And then, uh, if their AD carry happens to walk up, you press Gargoyle Stone Plate and eat him, and he dies. Gargoyle Stone Plate and eat him, yes. Gargoyle Stone Plate increases your ult damage, I believe, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it is not reduced by the large damage reduction for using Stone Plate, because it's true damage. Yep. So, Stone Plate eat is quite a huge, uh, chunk of damage. Yeah. And Cho'Gath, because of all of his inherent stats, he can kind of afford to go for, like, a AP Bruiser build like we saw from yeah. the Gragas last game. It's mm -hmm. a little bit... Uh, On top of his more consistent... A little bit more optimal for Cho'Gath. Yeah. Uh, and, he's, and he's a bit more consistent with the health passive now that it doesn't fall off when he yeah. dies. Yeah. A lot less reliant on snowballing mm -hmm. in that sense. But honestly, he's less reliant on snowballing, but he snowballs yeah. just as well, really. Uh, once he gets, if he can start killing his uh, uh, opposing laner with that ultimate, or just, you know, just win lane hard enough to continue feasting minions and get a CS advantage, he can get pretty tanky pretty fast. Yeah. And the tankier he gets, the more damage that feast does, and just the tankier he gets, the more of his Q's. His Q and W are both very, they're not always easy to land. The W is, is easy to land, but the Q is not always easy to land, but they're very impactful uh, spells. His Q not only does it have a substantial knockup, but slows for like 80% or something for yeah, a second the after the knockup. It has a huge slow on it. So Rupture is pretty great CC. It's out of range, compensated by the fact Cho'Goth is very immobile. <laughs> but he's, he's got good ranged AoE CC abilities that he can cast off of his, slowly as the game goes on, massive self. And he just tries to stand there and be a disruptor, both physically and with his abilities. Yeah. Uh, so the Rift Turtles, they got kind of, uh, they got good engage with Jarvan Oriana. They've got a good amount of protection for late game Caitlyn uh, with Oriana Karma. So a pretty interesting uh, composition, a little pretty well rounded. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing they don't have is a particularly good form of disengage. Like the best you, you're hoping for is silence and rupture yeah. and then run away. Cho Cho'Gath is is weird. You know, he's he's great for disengage for your team, but he cannot dis he can't get away himself. He can only help the team get away, and he kind of lags behind. Thunder buddies, um, 
drafted a pretty similar composition to that of their last game, mm -hmm. and 